So it feels like since the dawn of time in basketball, we're getting yelled at for not being low. Parents, coaches, everyone in the gym from the time we're five years old is yelling at us, get low, arms out, be in this low position on defense. But what if this was not the optimal stance defensively for every player? What if we're kind of trying to fit that round peg in a square hole? There are reasons behind why we get low on defense, and I will get into these in this video. But we also have to realize that what's best for someone may not always be the best for somebody else. And this is why many players have found themselves playing their best defense when they're still in a kind of upright position. So we just gotta understand when to get low, when not to get low, when to teach it, and how to teach it. We're gonna dive into all of that today. Let's get to it. All right, so first we have to understand why we get low defensively in the first place. Typically it's for one or a few of these reasons. Number one, it widens our base of support. We have more stability this way. If you stand right here with a wide base and have someone come and push you, and then you narrow those feet and you're standing here, it's obviously gonna be a lot more stable in this low wide position because our base of support is wider. Same thing defensively. When we wanna be more stable, we lower our center of mass, making it easier for us to maintain balance, widen our base of support, and next thing we know, it's a lot harder for us to get pushed over. So this can be very situational. When we're in close quarters on defense, whether we're in the post or we're on the perimeter, but a player is driving straight at our chest, we may want to lower ourselves down. Now we're more stable. We can withstand that contact and be able to play through this. Number two, every athlete is different, right? Some are more strength-based. They kind of muscle their way around the court. And then some athletes are more elastic, so to speak. They use quicker ground contact times. They pop off the ground quick and use that elastic energy to get around the court. Now, one is never going to be better than the other. We just have to consider these differences when we're teaching a technique like this getting low on defense. So these more strength-based athletes are the ones who will be in these low positions. These are typically the athletes with the more weight room strength, so to speak. So they work well at these lower joint angles. They're using relatively more muscle to bring them through that full range of motion into that slide or into that crossover step. So as a result, they're gonna be low most of the time. They're gonna be more comfortable in these low defensive positions. For example, here, I'm in a low position, so my hip and my knee are really flexed, and I have more of a range of motion to push through as I'm getting into my next step. Now, on the other hand, these more elastic athletes will generally be playing at higher joint angles. They're more right here. They're still in an athletic stance, but it's more of one that we can pop out of rather than being very flexed and having to propel ourselves through a full range of motion. Now, for these athletes, when they jump, their knees aren't bent as much. They run at higher joint angles. And defensively, again, they play upright at higher joint angles. So as a result, they spend less time on the ground. When they see that ball handler trying to go by them, it's a quick pop and they're using that elastic energy to get going in whichever direction. For example, in this clip, I'm more upright and now I'm using more of that stored elastic energy in the ankle to pop me into my next step. So if we try to put these players in this low position one they may not be able to get there because they're not used to it and two their ability to use that stored elastic energy is going to be dampened they're not going to move as comfortably they're not going to move as quickly and we're forcing them to do something that they're not one used to or two even good at some players just aren't meant to play low and you're going to see them get blown by more when they're in these low positions that we typically teach and then lastly a third reason as to why we get low is to lower our center of mass for something that's not stability so we've all played against that player who gets low feels like they're under us almost typically short players they're pesky they're reaching in and this is because they drop their level so they can get their hands right where we're dribbling so this is a product of them being in that low position really being able to swipe at our vulnerable areas now all three of these reasons can be really good reasons as to why we get low but again it's always going to be situational like i said if we're playing with more contact yes we might want to get lower here and be able to withstand that contact and play through that if we're moving at higher speeds and maybe be tougher for us to move in these low positions. We may want to play a little bit more upright. We feel more comfortable sprinting out of that and we can normally get going quicker out of these higher positions. And it's actually funny, a lot of players will start in these low positions on a possession. It's what we're taught. It looks a little bit more intimidating, so to speak. So they'll start here. But as that possession kind of rolls on, they're raising up, they're raising up. By the end, they're in this somewhat high upright position 
where they probably feel most comfortable. And the list of situations and reasons to be low and to not be low can go on and on, even coming down to a player's height. So for example, you will notice that shorter players generally play at these lower levels on defense. So why? This is a great example of something that we typically consider to be true, but it's interesting to look behind why it happens. So I can't say it with certainty, of course, but my guess is that this is for at least one of a few reasons. Number one, just anatomically, they have shorter legs. As a result, shorter players cannot cover as much ground with each step. So getting low expands the distance that they can cover with each individual step. Number two, being shorter, they already have that advantage of being under players, so to speak, where they're really getting pesky. So they're just maximizing this advantage, right? They're staying in this low position, staying under players, putting themselves in the best position to get a steal or swipe it away. And number three, since they're shorter, players will likely try to body them a bit more, play a little bit more rough with them. So as a result, they're getting low, expanding their base of support, lowering their center of mass, so they have more stability. You'll notice this in the post. Whenever there's a shorter guard defending a taller player, three or four, they're not gonna try to match their height by raising up. They're actually gonna get in this really low position where they can withstand this contact and not be pushed backwards. Plus, not to mention that all of this requires a skill. Getting low is literally a skill, a physical quality that we have to work on and understand when we're not good at it and why we're not good at it. There is a need for sufficient ankle and hip mobility to get into these low positions. We have to be comfortable working out of these low joint angles. We have to be comfortable getting into dropping into these low positions. So there's a whole host of qualities that we're gonna have to address if we wanna be good playing low defensively. But I also think it's important to realize that one, we have to figure out individually or with our athletes what the best level for us is. Some players, again, will likely be more comfortable in these low positions. Some are gonna feel more comfortable up here. Deciding which level is the best for you is step one. And step two is working towards that point where you can do both. Again, the situation really is gonna dictate whether you're gonna be up high, whether you're gonna be in that low position. But at the end of the day, I don't think yelling at players to get low all game long is the best way to go about it because there are so many different options that we have, it depends on the situation, it depends on the athlete, and we can never try to force an athlete into something that may not be optimal for them. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know if you like to play lower, a little bit more upright, if you've noticed any of these things in the past, and we'll have a whole discussion about it. As always, stay tuned for a lot more. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and by any means basketball, and check out our Mastery Hoops platform for a lot more like this.